Hey guys, Matt here from the Traveling Together Journal, bringing you another update on my camper build. In previous videos, you've watched me build a subframe out of rectangular steel tubing, build and mount my camper floor, and build all of the inner and outer walls that make up the lower portion of the camper. Taking a look at the build plan, you may remember that I am building a hard-sided pop-up, and we are ready to start building the cab over and inner pop-up walls. This is where we are currently at. All of the panels shown in pink are insulated, and the light green is non-insulated inner walls. The next thing we need to do is build this dark green panel. This will be the countertops and the bottom of the cab over. I'm building it out of 3 8 inch plywood, its overall length and width are 128 inches by 75 inches, so I had to cut it out in three different sections and join them together. To make the joints, I routed 3 16 of an inch off of each of the joining edges to make a 2 inch wide lap joint, which I glued and clamped together, starting with the section that will be our countertops. Then I glued and screwed on the framing for the cab over and then the forward panel for the cab over, which angles in at about 9 degrees on each side. Tapering the width from 75 inches at the back of the cab down to 60 inches at the front of the cab. Once the glue cured, I coated the bottom in 6 ounce fiberglass and epoxy resin, then struggled to get my awkward creation onto the camper. With a couple of clamps keeping things aligned, I tilted the plywood panel up so that I could coat the top edge of the walls in glue before screwing the panel down with countersunk deck screws. Then I mixed up some epoxy, chopped fiberglass, and fumed silica to fill in all the joints, then finished each one with a layer of 6 ounce cloth. The last piece needed to finish this step was this little L section, which I made from some of the scrap 3 8 inch plywood and routed out lap joints before gluing and screwing it in place. Now we're ready to start on the pop-up walls. I started with the two big panels on either side since they didn't have any windows, so they seemed the easiest. They are constructed using the same process I used for all of the other insulated walls. The frame is 1x2 Douglas fir stripping, held together with wood glue and pocket screws and 5mm plywood is glued to both sides of the frame. Then the inside of this wood structure is filled with polyurethane pore foam, and the outside is coated with epoxy resin and 6 ounce fiberglass cloth. Each panel is attached to the camper with wood glue and countersunk deck screws. Next, I built the rear inner pop-up wall. I needed to recess the window frame in the wall, so the aluminum trim on the window won't get in the way when the pop-up is going up and down. So I routed out lap joints in some 1x2s, and these became part of the frame for the insulated sections on either side of the window. The edges of the 5mm plywood were sanded down, and the corners of the wall were given a 1 inch radius with the router so that I could glass over them easily. The panel was put in place with wood glue and countersunk deck screws, then all of the joints were done with chop strand epoxy mix and a layer of 6 ounce cloth. And the countertops were also given a layer of 6 ounce cloth and epoxy at this point. Now for the cab over walls. I needed to make two more walls with windows in them. I followed the same process I used for the rear wall to create a recessed window frame with an insulated section of wall on each side. But instead of routering off the corners, I used a circular saw to cut an angle on both edges to accommodate the tapered shape of the cab over. Each of these sections was glued, screwed, and then glassed in place before moving on to the front wall. No windows in this one, just a simple panel with Douglas fir frame, plywood skins, and foam core. But I did need to cut the edges to meet the angle of the cab over walls before gluing, screwing, and glassing it in place. With the inner pop-up walls done, I was ready to insulate the cab over floor. The pore foam I've been using wouldn't work very well for this wide, shallow space between the cab over frame, so it was fortunate for me we finally got some XPS products back in stock here in California. I found a new product from Foamular, available at Lowe's Home Improvement, being marketed as NGX. 
It is an XPS foam with 25 PSI compressive strength that meets the new emissions regulations in the US and Canada. Unfortunately, it was only available in a two inch thickness. I found a basic handsaw cut through it pretty well, so I decided to use that to cut the foam down to the thickness I needed, using the cab over frame as a guide. It took some effort, but produced acceptable results. I roughed up the factory finish on the other side of each panel with 80 grit sandpaper in hopes of getting a better adhesion. Then I coated the wood and the foam in epoxy and put them in place with weight on top to make a better bond. Next came a sheet of 5mm plywood. To follow the angle and curve of the walls, I made a little scribe tool by taping a pen to a chunk of scrap wood. As you drag the piece of wood along the wall, the pen is spaced out at a consistent distance. This allows you to draw your cut line on the plywood, which I then cut out using a jigsaw. I coated the foam and frame in epoxy, thickened with fume silica, to make it about the consistency of mayonnaise. And I painted the bottom of the plywood with unthickened epoxy before putting it in place and applying weight to it. I was satisfied with the result, and after a bit of sanding, I filled the seams with chopped strand and epoxy paste, and applied a layer of 6 ounce cloth and epoxy. Finally, I added these little sections of 5mm plywood. They are glassed on both sides, and glued, screwed, and glassed in place. They will keep the mattress from sliding off the cab over, provide some separation between our bed and cooking surface, and act as a gusset for the pop-up wall. That completes the cab over, and thus the entire permanent structure of the camper. It feels pretty good to be able to walk inside and feel like my vision is progressing towards reality. Thanks for watching. Join me next time as I work on the outer pop-up walls and the roof of the camper.